on the 16th floor of the New York Times headquarters in Manhattan, you will find a peculiar room, its walls and ceiling lined with black foam egg crate insulation I decorated it myself, Michael Barbaro, the host of the Times's podcast The Daily, said during a visit this week. It is the size of a large storage closet because it used to be one. Now it's a small audio studio, scattered with homey touches, marbled end tables, faux succulents, and hydrangeas. Real plants aren't an option because there's no natural light, as Lisa Tobin, who edits the show, pointed out matter-of-factly. Those personal details are important, The Daily, a news podcast produced five days a week, is created by Mr. Barbaro plus a full-time staff of eight editors and producers, who spend a lot of time in this room. When the show was introduced a year ago, on February 1st, 2017, with just three producers and Mr. Barbaro, they spent almost all their time there. A day of creating the daily starts early around 9.30 a.m., when at least one member of the team attends the Times's morning news meeting to learn which stories will drive the day's conversation and ends late, as the last post-production tweaks are made well into the night, in preparation for releasing the episode by 6 a.m. the next day. In between, Mr. Barbaro, the producers and the editors write and edit the script, seek out sources to interview, find supporting voices, music, and archival recordings, and tape the show. Making the Daily has been a singular experience, both for Mr. Barbaro, who had been a business and political reporter for the Times since 2005, and for the founding producers, who came from an equally august and entrenched tradition, in public radio. Ms. Tobin, the executive producer of New York Times Audio, formerly worked at WBUR, Andy Mills came from Radio Lab, and Theo Balcombe from All Things Considered. All four knew from the beginning that the Daily would stand apart from both the kind of incremental, by the book radio news broadcasts that date back to the 1920s and the kind of pure narrative that has made shows like This American Life so popular in more recent years. Rather, The Daily combines elements of both often in very different ways from day to day. Over two days last month, for example, an interview with The Times reporter Katrin Einhorn about her reporting on sexual harassment at Ford was followed by an episode consisting entirely of sound clips from throughout 2017, with no preamble or commentary, an audio time capsule. The show's team has benefited from the free reign to produce boldly experimental work as well as from the considerable intellectual resources represented by their colleagues in the Times's newsroom. Most episodes of the show center on Mr. Barbaro interviewing Times reporters, focusing especially on how the particulars of the day's breaking news are shaped by the contours of the beats they've covered, in many cases, for years. It was, at first, a big ask. So often, we were asking the reporter who truly had the least time to spend the most time with us, Ms. Tobin said. But if the 126 journalists who have appeared on the show have been generous with their time, The Daily has presented a fresh opportunity for them, too. The Washington correspondent Matt Apuzzo, who has been featured on 19 episodes, said that taping a spot on the show in the middle of writing a big story often helped him to clarify his approach. The feedback, too, is better, I think people understand better the time that we put into the reporting, and the time it takes to try to figure things out, he said. In a particularly frenzied year for news out of the White House, Talking with The Daily also helped listeners understand how we're trying to make sense of it, in a way that you just can't do in the printed word, 
he added. Catherine Porter, the Canada Bureau chief, concurred. I love hearing different reporters tell their stories because it brings out their personalities, their thoughts and insights, their humor in a way that is often missed in the written report, she said. The program really humanizes us in the same way we try to humanize the subjects we write about. Both Mr. Barbaro and Ms. Tobin cited as a turning point for the show the moment three or four months in when Times journalists began to share not only their time, but their contacts, with the Daily, allowing the show to pair interviews with reporters and with their sources in order to tell their stories more deeply and to incorporate a new kind of transparency into the way those stories are told. That's pretty much unheard of in newsrooms. Reporters, and I say this as a long-time reporter, are very possessive of sources, Mr. Barbaro said. To hand them over to another group of people and entrust their story is a leap. In its first year, the show's deeply collaborative approach has succeeded beyond anyone's expectation, the Daily has been downloaded more than 200 million times and was the most popular new podcast on Apple Podcasts in 2017. It has inspired admiring coverage in publications ranging from BuzzFeed, a Photoshop-heavy piece titled We Gotta Talk About Michael Barbaro, the host of the NYT's Daily Podcast, to The New Yorker, an appreciation by Rebecca Mead, who called the show a 20-minute update murmured in your ear by a well-informed, sensitive, funny, modest friend, dot as they move into the second year, the team has some concrete goals sending producers out to report in the field more often, for example but, they're all secondary to the primary motivation, to continue to find inventive ways to tell the story of the news, Outloud.ms. Balcombe put it simply, I want to keep surprising everybody.